Here's a problem from 5.4. This is a surface area problem. Problem 38. Uh, the instructions say, find the area of the surface obtained by revolving the given curve about the indicated axis. So, I have x equals 1 sixth y to the third plus 1 half uh, y to the negative 1 for y between 1 and 2 rotated around the x axis. So I've rewritten that problem, but notice that I've rewritten it with y to the negative 1. I prefer to think about these problems instead of writing 1 over y as a negative power, since I'm going to have to take the derivative of that at some point. Let's see, what does that picture look like? That picture looks something like this. I'm going from y equals 1 to 2. Uh, when y equals 1, can you see that that's uh, a sixth plus a half? So that's maybe 4 sixths or 2 thirds. Uh, when y is 2, uh, that comes out to 8 sixths plus a fourth. So something up there, not, not a super exciting shape, something like that. We're going to rotate it around the y axis. So you've got a shape that comes out like this. I'm concerned about the surface area, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little piece of the arc length and rotate it all the way around. Remember that the formula for that is we're going to be cutting from 1 to 2 along the y-axis. Since we've got the circumference, that's 2 pi times the radius. Notice that the radius is just how far this is out in the x-direction. That's just the function. 1 sixth x to the third plus 1 half y to the negative 1 times that approximation of the arc length, that is the square root of 1 plus the derivative of this all squared. Now the derivative of this, uh, the derivative of y cubed is 3y squared, so this is 1 half y squared. This becomes minus, when I take the derivative, minus 1 half y to the negative 2. Okay, that's a little scrunched there, but it's a really key form. Uh, can you see the y squared and then the y to the negative 2? Uh, that piece there is going to simplify in a sort of a classic way, so pay close attention to that piece. I'll get my hand out of the way in a, in a moment. This piece right here is going to simplify in a very particular way. I've got 1. The first piece times itself gets me 1 fourth y to the 4. The middle term is going to be a half times a half, but then I'm going to have two of them, so that's going to be negative a half. Then y squared times y to the negative 2 is just going to give me a constant, so I just have negative a half. The last term is positive 1 fourth y to the negative 4. Okay? Now notice what happens here. I've got 1 minus a half. So the front stuff doesn't change at all, but if I combine the constant terms, what happens is all that changes is I lose the 1 and the sign changes in that middle term. Okay, so that's the same. It's going to be the same in the next line too. Just imagine that continuing. What happens in the next line, I'm going to refactor this but since it doesn't have a negative sign, now it's just going to be this term squared with the plus in the middle. Can you see? I'm sorry, this should be a 4. I'm just copying from the line above. 1 half y squared. Then that's plus 1 half y to the negative 2. Okay? So that's, that's a trick that's quite common. Now my last line is going to sort of put that all together. I'll, I'm going to start using this again, so I'll, I'll, I'll re-include it here. 1 sixth, oops, 1 sixth y, this should be a y all the way through, of course, y to the third, y to the third plus 1 half y to the negative 1. And then since I have this squared and square rooted, the beauty of this is that those cancel.
Now I have something that I can just multiply out, then I can integrate it quite easily. Okay, so one last step before I integrate. Notice what's happening here. I have 1 twelfth y to the fifth. Then this times that is 1 twelfth y. This term times that term is 1 fourth y. This term times that term is 1 fourth y uh, to the negative 3. Okay, so time to integrate. And so how does that work out for us? I've got 2 pi, the integral of this, hmm, uh, it's going to be uh, y to the sixth, so I'll have to divide by six, that's one over 72, or I'm going to need that as nine times eight. This is going to be uh, y squared, so I've got to divide by two, that's one over, uh, let's see what we have here, 24. Then here I have y squared again, got to divide by two, so that's one eighth y squared. Here, I guess this becomes negative, because when I add 1, here's why I like to write it as a negative exponent. It's easier to integrate. I have to divide by negative 2. That becomes negative 1 eighth, and I'm evaluating that from 1 to 2. Okay, so almost there. Now I just have to make sure I don't make any typos plugging that in. Now, 2 to the 6th, luckily I'm dividing by 8, which is 2 to the 3rd, so that will cancel three of those six twos. I'm left with three more twos, so two times two times two, which is eight. Here I get four divided by twenty-four, that's one-sixth. Then here I get four divided by eight, that's one-half. Here I get, uh, let's see, negative one-eighth times one-fourth, that's one-thirty-second. Um, let's see, then all of that is the first term, then I'm going to subtract, plugging a 1 into all of that mess, that's 1 over 72, plus 1 over 24, plus 1 over 8, minus 1 over 8. Honestly, that's, that's a lot of fractions to put together, I did it, uh, in private so that you wouldn't have to put up with all of my calculating, but you could get a common denominator and reduce and it would come out to 47 30 seconds. So then we put that all together and you get pi times 47 sixteenths. There you have it. That's the surface area. So have fun.